Coachella. This is I'm I'm so excited about this because you haven't been back since yes uh, years, almost seven years, seven years now. Is it something like that? Yes, it's been a while. <laughs> yes. So you are you are bringing 5K to Ultra. What are you bringing to us for Coachella? Uh, I'm uh, yeah I'm 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 bringing. I think 5K is almost like a new moniker for for what I do, and and the thing we're we're, we're working on is in the next year or so try to change Santa Clannabert into 5K, which is going to be um, a frame in which I can um, most probably do um, a lot more exciting stuff without having the weight. Uh, that is my name uh, uh, with me, so to speak. And I'm not saying weight in a in a most in a in a in, in a positive kind of uh, uh, way, but more in a creative, creative, creatively being creatively more free uh, type of way. Um, because I felt a little stuck, and I wanted to create something in which I had less fear and more. Uh, reason and excitement to start thinking outside the box again. Well, and, and what I really love about the album is that it kind of feel like it touches on so many different genres. It almost kind of reminded me of Coachella itself in a way because Coachella brings so many different genres together. So I feel like with the album, uh, it's really, I, I feel like Coachella is like almost the perfect place for it because you have you know, so many different guests on there and so many different styles of music that I, I'm yeah. kind of very excited to see it in the live setting. Okay, cool. But it, to me, it was the whole process of doing this album, uh, and that's why it took me uh, far, far too long, long and, and, and was far too nerve-wracking, is because I find it very, very difficult to stay in one, especially when it comes to an album. It just gets so incredibly boring to listen to 12 of these sort of same type of tracks. Now, I know the whole world wants this, I and mean, it's a very big frustration for me because I, I'd rather be far more free in, in what I do than I, than I sometimes am able to because of what you've done once and, and, and that what you've done once gets the accolades and then people think that that's you and I don't know, it's just, it's a very, um, today's world is very, there's, there's not a lot of room to, to go either way of the direction that you've you've went into as an artist, um, and and that's very frustrating because I, I think the most exciting stuff happens when you step outside your uh, your path and when you when you look <coughs> for exciting exciting new ways of trying to get across what you what you're trying to get across. But I mean, the album gets accept gets accepted by a lot of people in in in, in, in probably as many different ways as the as 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 the styles that, that I try to represent on the album, because there's a lot of people that go like, well, you know, Sanders is he not, you know, not making 12 house tracks. Oh, I don't like this. This is not what I thought it was going to be, so, you know, exit. Uh, or other people go like, oh, this is great. This is someone who does try to break out. But I mean, I do understand, you know, um, it's maybe a little bit, maybe it's a little bit much digest. I mean, you know, but that's just, I mean, you know, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, how, how do you merge those two sides? Like, I mean, here you are at, as an artist a, and creating these different styles with 5K, but then you do have those fans who know you for your house music. Like, for you, like, how is that, how has it been to, to balance those sides? Um, well, it's, it's, it's mostly, the, the frustration really hits when I, when I go into a club on a Saturday night, which I obviously love, and which is my first love, and something I've been doing for 20 years with a lot of passion and a lot of enthusiasm. Um, and that's Saturday night, but I don't live every Saturday night uh, seven times uh, in the week uh, during the week. I I, uh, I have a life, you know. I have a child, and my my mother passed away, and uh, I I am uh, critical about the state of the world. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of issues that I cannot put into Saturday night at all. Uh, Saturday night is meant to be a time to let go and a time to just not think of those things. But then when I'm in the studio on, on Monday, 
I find it at least very hard to just go like, oh yeah, you know, I'll relive Saturday night every day of the week, and that's my frame of mind for when I when I when I do my uh, my my production. And this is probably more or less where uh, where where this album came from, and and um, how it came together in, in the way it came together. Plus the fact that it's I wanted to do something auto with with a little bit of a reflection of where I come from. A lot of the styles and the directions are. Things that have influenced me at some point, from Giorgio Moroder to Depeche Mode to hip hop to, I mean, you know, all mostly all urban and exciting underground movements somehow in the last 20 years or 30 years have influenced me. And I wanted to do and make a document that um, was truly a reflection of what moves me, or, uh, or try to. Well, you know, and, and you mentioned, you know, the love of hip-hop. Like, one of the, the songs that immediately stuck out to me was This Love. Like, I, I love that. Like, it, and, you know, you have that on there, and then you've got the dance floor songs, like Maniac and Healer, and then it's, it's like, Closer almost has, like, a rock vibe to it as well. So I, I really love that you kind yeah. of go across. But I, I still feel like, uh, as a whole, it still is, it, while it may not be the Saturday night that uh, all of your fans are necessarily used to, I kind of feel like the album itself is a soundtrack for a Saturday night, and maybe it's like just a soundtrack for a Saturday night for a, a different audience than, than the typical uh, Sandra Kleidenberg uh, club fan base. Yeah, well, well, yes, but, but then again, like I said, if, if you carry the weight, I mean, if people have a prejudice of who you are and what you do, and that's essentially, obviously, the fan base that you project this album onto, mm -hmm. Uh, and you also have a, a, another part of the world that s sort of goes like, well, you know, Santa Kleinberg, you have heard of him, he isn't but the guy that does Saturday Night, you know. <laughs> um, obviously putting this, putting this album out there is, it, you know, it's, it's like, like I said, it, 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 um, it is maybe, I, I'm asking a lot of people to, to, to actually listen to Santa, understand it, and, and try and uh, understand the depth of some of the issues I'm trying to uh, raise, you know, and, and uh, like I said, without sounding too um, uh, like a teacher or to um, do with a with finger like, oh, look out! It, 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 I mean, that's just that's yeah. I don't know. It, like I said, that's that's the the ambivalence. I think is the word between uh, what I do on a Saturday night, which is entertain, and there's you know, I, which is great. Uh, don't get me wrong. And then, as an artist trying to trying to do something with with this with a bit of substance, I guess you know. Uh, and then even the form I'm doing it into being so wide. But I'm, I I like the idea of it being like a Coachella, like a like a festival. And 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 in essence, I think that it, that is uh, also um, what I'm trying to grow to, which is obviously a more mature. And a more broader uh, entertainer, producer, slash writer, slash whatever you want to call it. Well, you've had you've had so many guests on the album as well. Like, are any of them going to be coming, making a special guest appearance at Coachella? Might we see someone like Jamie Cullum appear? Yeah, yeah. Well, Jamie's coming on a few uh, shows. I, I'm not sure if he's. Uh, I think we're working on Coachella, but it's going to be. I mean, it's going to be an exciting sort of family type of. Uh, you know, get together and whoever um, can be there will be there. And if he or she is not there, then um, since, since I, I DJ and I, I use a lot of video in my uh, in my, I'll have uh, uh, most of them with me uh, um, on video. You know, so that's I mean, in nowadays in the world, I mean, it's, that's almost the same, isn't it? <laughs> well, well like, uh, tell me but a little bit. I'm recording a track with uh, Death. Uh, she's a, a young heart. Um, yeah, from the cataracts. Star in the making, I guess. From Dev from the cataracts. From the cataracts, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and um, she's going to be there with me on stage. Oh, uh, we we just, did a, just did a track together, which uh, I'm finishing at the moment. And um, uh, I've, I've done a few mixes on uh, a couple of her tracks that, that you know we're going to feature there. So that's going to be... An exciting part of what I do. So yeah, there, it's like uh, I guess I guess the, the DJ side of me 
does not want to live in the past for too long. I think the, the most exciting thing for me of being, being a DJ is the fact that you can, can continuously reinvent what you do and feed your your performances with, with fresh and new injections of, of all kinds. I think the only limitation will be that most of those injections will come from my for my end, you know, I, most of this, you know, 99% of the stuff will be um, will be done will be my own production. Uh, but within that, I, I love the idea of of, of, of the, having that constant refreshment uh, uh, in place. Well, it's going to be very exciting. I mean, working with Dev is like, I mean, she's she's like, she's a, I mean, she's just incredible, just such a natural, you know, swag <laughs> that she has. It's really cool. Well, tell me a little bit about about the video. Like, how important has video become and like a visual element become to the music, uh, in your opinion, over the last like two decades? Well, I th I th it, it kind of depends on uh, what you do uh, as an artist. But since I try um, with everything I do to have a little bit of a subtlety to to my sound, mm -hmm. uh, and not it's not always so obvious. I mean, there is a lot of people out there. Um, and they are great in their own world, and, and I admire each and every single one on his or her journey. Uh, um, but some music out there is quite predictable and quite sort of really catered for a crowd to just digest, and that there's no need for any other uh, tricks or trickery to, to get that message across. But my, like I said, my music m might be at times just a little more subtle, and then I thought a few years ago, like, okay, how can I be representing myself on the stages that I've managed my, to get myself on without losing uh, the, the subtlety um, and still being able to be experimental uh, but do have that sort of bigger impact and and, and and then you realize like you know you can do this with with DJing other people's records and some of your own and but but adding video and having a whole creative um, element mixed into the equation is, is a very exciting prospect for me and and, and, and is something that I've been uh, experimenting with and, and investigating and uh, helping pioneer the, the Japanese DJ uh, equipment company <laughs> nowadays they used to make televisions but um, <laughs> uh, uh, to, to de develop uh, you know uh, the players for it and the mixers for it and just really be on, on the forefront of that technology because I think I think it's an exciting dimension to add I I into the mix. It's nothing new. I mean, Larry Levan uh, in the Paradise Garage or already played and toyed around with video, so it's it's, it's not new, but it's 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 a, it's for me it's exciting. Well, and do you feel that that the visuals are part of the the new 5K experience? Yeah, I think. I mean, if I look at it, and if I if I if I look at where I and how I've developed to the point where I am now, it almost kind of feels like, I don't know, it's like a, it's like a transitional, I don't want to say it's like a butterfly uh, moment, but it's almost like I've worked and been able to, very blessed about the fact that I've been able to, to work on, the, you know, on a certain level and with the means and the, 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 the somewhat success I've had over the last years. And really, sort of developed to this point where I'm, where I can really, I don't know, just truly be close to me, uh, and represent on a on a on a on a on a on an amazing level, it's a, a level I had never even dreamt of when I grew up as a kid in the in, in the east of the Netherlands. Well, what do you think it Honestly. is? Honestly, <laughs> what do you think it is <laughs> about Coachella that that? Oh wow! Sorry, I like heard myself there. Totally freaked me out. <laughs> uh, what it, What do you think it is yes, about Coachella that that has just made it such a force in the festivals worldwide? Um, well, I think they're 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 the talent that they book is unparalleled. Um, I think the fact that it, it is in California uh, obviously has. Um, a great element. I think, to be really quite honest, uh, and I think I don't. I'm not saying this. Uh, I'm not the only one who's saying this. But I think there's been a really huge cultural shift in America, um, and I think the West Coast has become, uh, or at least it seems it has become, more important. 
and it seems like some other cities have lost a little bit of their cultural relevance. Uh, and I think specifically when it com comes to urban or young or pop culture, um, there's a lot of exciting stuff. There's a lot, of, lot of exciting stuff happening. So uh, automatically, that obviously means that uh, um, that Coachella just has this momentum, uh, you know, going for themselves. Uh, I think clubs. It, I would. It would not surprise me if, if festivals would uh, would bec become and 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 be of greater importance uh, than clubs have in, in recent times. So I think clubs have been very very strong. Um, but it, you know, could, 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 yeah, I think, like I said, so maybe there's a, there's a combination of all these things. And momentum is obviously. Well, do you think, because one thing I've just noticed, you know, I've been out here for about five years, is that we have such a stronger uh, connection, stronger electronic music events in our area. Like, have you noticed, because you, you tour all around the world, like, is it something yeah. that you think is becoming even stronger in America? Like, it is, you know, the rest of the world has been onto electronic music for a very long time. Like, is America... Okay, let, let, let's, yeah, let, let's, let me just, uh, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, uh, the rest of the world uh, has been on to electronica uh, uh, not as long as America has. Okay, let's not forget there were a few clubs in uh, in the East Coast, in New York, in Detroit, in Chicago, that had in, uh, in, in Canada, in Montreal, and Toronto, around the, the the lakes that had a tremendous, phenomenal, uh, in, you know, impact on the world. Uh, so the British. To, to pick it and make it, uh, made, made, made their own version of it. They called it rave. Uh, you know, the Dutch stole from everybody and, and uh, called it Eurotrans. Uh, you know, there, there's a. Uh, the, I, I'm not feeling so much that there is a difference between. And Americans seem to think this that there is so much of a difference between, let's say, Miami or Ibiza. You know, I, I to me those uh, those uh, have been. Uh, Relatively parallel, uh, but w one thing that is true is that the um, festival scene in Europe seems to be, uh, or was, uh, stronger than uh, than America. It seemed there were more festivals. Um, I don't know why. Uh, maybe because I don't know. Maybe it's because the the population is more dense in in Europe, or I have no idea. But but that seems. To Seems to be changing now, you know, with South by Southwest and Palooza, and I mean, it's like all these new things, you know, new festivals uh, popping up, and I don't know. I think it's also a sign that, that dance music has grown out outside the clubs and has not have now become such a such a great and big phenomenon that it that it can live outside, uh, you know, thousand capacity rooms and, and, and can sell out fifty thousand tickets. Exactly. Um, I guess you know. Yeah. Exactly. Well, you, you've had so many accomplishments so far. Like, what are you the most proud of in your musical career? Oh, I was just talking to my wife. I, I think I want to quit everything today. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, no. I'm never. I ne I'm. I'm. I'm sorry. I'm the worst when it comes to being uh, proud of or looking back or go like, oh, this was great. I'm always like, oh, that was bad. Or this could have done. This could have been better. And I should have do this better. And you know, I'm. I'm never really. Looking back, I'm, I'm always trying to think of like how I can improve what I do, and not only as a as a artist, but as a as a human being. I I'm quite harsh uh, to myself. Well, what else are we going to see from you in 2011? Um. Well, yeah. No, I mean, I'm I've just done a ton of remixes, which I haven't done in ages. Um, I just finished something for Katy Perry and uh, uh, Daft Punk, which is great because that, that was like, wow, I didn't know it. I, I hadn't expected to remix, ever remix Daft Punk because they don't usually have their stuff remixed, but Disney <laughs> now own their, uh, own their little, uh, Disney can do whatever they want, they want with them. So I took uh, advantage of the evil mouse and I signed the contract. <laughs> Which is really weird. He's signing a contract with Walt Disney. It's like, you know. But um, I, I have to remind you that remix is for Tron, the soundtrack, and obviously that's Disney. So, um, but that was, that was that's exciting. And uh, the track I'm doing with Dev, uh, there's loads of stuff lined up and, and exciting new uh, things to do. I think um, looking at the album, 
uh, what it definitely has done. Um, and it's funny because there's a parallel because about 11 years ago I did an album as well, which is not so far from this album. It's also very, very there's lots of variations on it, and and it's almost like a, looking back at it now. Then it's almost like a like a sort of like a drawing board trying to find sort of a a way or a form, uh, and it almost almost seems like this is the same sort of situation again. Where I um, sorry I gotta plug my thing in. Uh, where I um, use the album as a uh, yeah, like a I don't know uh, uh, something to put me back in a in a spot where I you know I don't know uh, where I can be creative again and and find my form so to speak. Um, so yeah, so loads of stuff. Well, wonderful. Well, I can't wait to see you just over a few days from, well, not a few days, I guess like a few weeks from now, just a month. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing 5K live yeah. on uh, at thank Coachella. You. And I really think thank it's a you. fantastic album. And thank you so much, and thank you for the tech help with Skype. <laughs> thank you. No, 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 no worries, no worries. <laughs> <laughs> thank Ciao. you. Have a, have a great day. Bye. Bye.